Do you know the newest tool to help you grow on your social media? It's an old tool actually that's been around for quite some time on web. Hi everyone, my name's Andrea and I'm the founder and CEO of a digital marketing agency called Dia Creative. We specialize as being an extension of your existing team, helping with full service marketing for businesses of all sizes and across all verticals and in all industries. Here on this channel, I'm gonna take everything I've learned in the last 20 years of marketing, plus everything that we're doing actively with our clients today and sharing it with you. Make sure to like and subscribe to get the benefit of over 20 years of marketing experience, plus all of the results we're getting from our current marketing endeavors. To really understand SEO, we actually need to go back to the start of the internet. Not the very, very start where nobody was using it, but the start around in the late 90s, early 2000s, when internet started becoming a little bit more user-friendly. There were a lot of other search engines around at the time. I don't know if you remember any of them, but Google was the new kid on the block trying to, this big up and comer and they wanted to do things very differently. So all the other search engines like Yahoo or Ask Jeeves, Netscape, Internet Explorer, all of these search engines had basic algorithms to understand what they should serve you. They weren't particularly sophisticated. What we found actually, most of those sites were getting traffic by being very busy news sources. If you go to AOL.com or Yahoo.com, you'll see a very similar experience from the one 20 years ago. You went to those sites to get all the other information and it just happened to have a search bar to kind of give you results that were on the internet. Google came out with something completely different at the time. It was a blank page that just had the Google logo and just a search bar. Now remember, every single search engine company is out there to make a profit. The only way they make a profit is by optimizing the results they give you. And Google, instead of focusing on making sure that they had cool news and sports and all these other things, messengers, et cetera, all that stuff on their platform, they just wanted to keep it clean. They exist just to give you the algorithm, to give you the best possible results. If Google gives you the best possible results every time you search, that's the one you're always gonna go with. And that strategy alone propelled them into the behemoth that we know today. Why am I telling you all this when we're here to talk about social media? Because social media companies have finally clued in to how SEO works and why Google was right all along. We're gonna go through the importance of SEO in social media, how to leverage SEO by conducting keyword research, how to optimize your social media profiles for this new search engine driven social media, the importance of high quality content and leveraging those keywords to get the traffic you want to your platform and to your profile. What SEO optimization practices are relevant for each of the different social media platforms? And finally, we're gonna look at the effectiveness of your social media approach by analyzing how fast your certain keywords are growing. So let's dig in. Each social media platform still has its core identity. As an example, Facebook's algorithm optimizes traffic towards Facebook groups over Facebook pages, because at the end of the day, they're all still looking for that community. Instagram's algorithms has changed recently as it's trying to respond to TikTok and that success. You'll see YouTube doing a similar thing. TikTok came out with these short form videos that swipe up and then you can travel through and, and get you down this addictive rabbit hole of looking at content after content after content. The next innovation that TikTok really brought in was this SEO, leveraging the same type of algorithm that optimizes what content is going to be shown up in your Google search is now what TikTok is using to ensure that you are seeing the content you want. In fact, with younger generations, they're preferring to use TikTok over Google when looking for local bars, restaurants, and activities in their area or when traveling. That's because TikTok is using the same sort of keyword algorithms that Google's using, but you can have that more interactive experience. Google's gonna take you to a Yelp page or to the brand's home page, but with TikTok, based on certain keywords that people have put in their posts, you now get a more authentic experience of that location. That's all TikTok's algorithm is trying to do, is become your preferred source of valid information. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Google, YouTube, all they really want is more viewers, more people on their screen so they can sell more ads and make more money. That's their entire business model. So anything you can 
can do to bring more eyeballs to their platform, to have people spend more time on their platform, either through better content, uh, through more engaging content, through high value content, all of that's just going to have them prefer your content on their platform. And that's really all it boils down to when you look at SEO and keyword research. Now you've found your target keywords, where should you be using them? Anything from your username, your bio, every single post you have. Now, there's currently a little bit of a discussion about whether hashtags still work well and whether or not we should still use them. As Instagram optimizes its algorithm to keyword research and keyword focus, you don't necessarily need to use your hashtags in order to be discovered or served up when a general user is having a search. So Instagram at this point is doing exactly what TikTok announced it did six months ago. Everything you're writing in your post description, including all your captions in your reels or any sort of words that it can pull out are all being used to feed the algorithm to let them know where they should be putting your post. So as a user, if I search for something and you didn't use it in a hashtag, your post may still come up because of this new algorithm update. But how do you use hashtags? So for Instagram in particular, hashtags are used to get you on their version of like a for you page based on that hashtag. So if you go into their search and you go to their hashtag page, if you have all the other keywords that generated the traffic and you've got the good watch time and you've got the good engagement, that's going to get you on that particular page. But if you don't use a hashtag, but you are using the right keywords, you'll still show up for their searches. Now that you've found your keywords, you're probably wondering where should I be using them and when? I think the same rules apply that we were using for SEO all along, early and often. So once you've figured out exactly which keywords you want to uh, try to address, and don't pick too many, let's start you super and simple so you can show some success and then keep adding to that success. Pick three to five keywords that you're really down to use and use them in your username if possible, definitely in your bio, in your captions, but this doesn't always have to be in your hashtags. Let me explain. Your hashtags are used to put you onto that hashtag for you page-ish that Instagram does. But Instagram is actually scanning all of your caption, including any captions you have on the video itself. As a result, you are going to show up for these search terms, even if you didn't hashtag them, but use your hashtags specifically thinking through what page you're gonna to wanna to show up on the hashtag search. So if you're doing something long-winded or if you've got longer tail keywords, if you're looking at like restaurants in Baltimore, you might not wanna have the hashtag restaurants in Baltimore, but you can use it in your captions. What you might want instead is something very, very specific like Baltimore BBQ and you're the barbecue restaurant that comes up for that. That's the hashtag page you'd wanna be on, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's a hashtag you wanna use in your caption because that's just gonna end up getting too long and busy and ugly looking there is a really good chance that Instagram is going to move away from hashtags. It's already starting to make those movements. In fact, you can see that even Instagram is putting out that their search results are gonna be based on any and all copy that they see. And like I said, those hashtags are only going to be to try to get you onto that hashtag page. Now you've got your keywords, you've figured out where to place them. That's it, right? You're ready to go. No. At the end of the day, the algorithm is still watching watch time and engagement on your post. Regardless of what keywords you use, the content quality still has to be there because Instagram's algorithm is watching your views, your engagement, your shares, your saves, all of that's going to contribute to them evaluating how high quality your content is. So yes, use your keywords, but if you're putting out low quality content, it's still not gonna rank because other people are putting out higher quality content for those same keywords. Now let's go through five major social media platforms and how they're using SEO to pull up the best possible content for each user. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok. Now let's take a deep dive into your analytics. One of the best ways to check your analytics is to go into the platform itself. Every single social media platform has an analytics space where you can see your engagement, your likes, etc. Similar to how you've been already probably doing, look through your most popular posts. And if those also were using the keywords you were focusing on, you were probably focusing on the right keywords. Yes, it's a conglomeration of the keyword plus the quality of the content, plus the shareability of the content. There's a lot of different features that'll go into what your pop most popular post is. But if you post the same post or something similar and you're using different keywords, that's a great way to test. 
or if you're using the same keyword across multiple different types of posts and you're seeing those are the ones that are also leveraged, it's a great way to kind of suss out if the keywords you've picked are the right ones for you. There's also a number of tools that you can buy or subscribe to that will give you deeper analytics into your overall performance on social media and how your keywords are performing. One great tool you might be ignoring for social media to find your keywords is Google Trends. It's a free website, trends.google.com, that shows you all the trends of what people are searching on Google. If they're searching it on Google, there's a very good chance they're also searching it on the social media platforms. Check them out. And if you're ready to take your marketing to the next level, reach out to diacreative.com. The link is right here. Thanks again for watching our marketing insights on YouTube. If you liked this video, there are a couple more that we've got ready for you. And uh, make sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends, share any marketing questions at all, pop them in the comments below and we'll make sure to get them answered. Thanks for watching.